Australia's big battery project has hit a snag. One of the massive Tesla battery packs at the Moorable site has gone up in flames. It was undergoing testing when the blaze broke out. The area was cordoned off as firefighters contained the flames. A warning was issued to nearby residents about toxic smoke in the area. The site was disconnected from the grid, so there was no disruption to the electricity supply. All right, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to go over this Tesla mega pack fire and then also how the airline industry is looking more and more into EVs um, with their future aircrafts. So as long with this Tesla mega pack fire, um, the county authority said that it was a challenging situation given the complexity of the site and the mega packs themselves. Um, it began on Friday, July 30th and it spread to a second mega pack before it was controlled the following Monday so it was quite a few days they worked on it 150 firefighters were on scene this is the first mega pack fire that ever happened in the world and I believe there's going to be a lot more in the future as far as um, battery packs and fires as more and more industries are starting to look towards EV so it's a difficult to fight because you can't put water on the mega packs and that's what all firefighter um, trucks carry is water so it's going to make a lot of um, adaptations needed in the future to see how we can better be prepared for these type of fires. Um, and that does extend the length of time that the fire burns for when you put water on it. So Tesla recommended to approach the fire by cooling everything around it. So control exposures and then also just kind of letting itself burn out. So if that's the case, then... You know, we're going to be on scene a lot longer and um, basically waiting these fires out. My um, kind of worry is what if it's a large, large amount of fire um, that continuously spreads and it's unable to control exposures and you're also unable to put it out with water. So just some things to think about. Um, the aviation industry has been moving on. So American United um, Airlines invested millions into these electric vertical takeoff and land aircraft um you know they're all trying to get the lead on it and find out the newest technologies and basically try to be first first on when it comes to these these technologies so there's the evitals there's the joby aviation and volocopter will arrive as soon as 2024 and, um, you know, they're trying to make these things all autonomous so that there's no pilots and they kind of want to make it so that it's it's like an air taxi service. So this is the Volocopter and here is uh, Jovi Aviation. So they're looking, yeah, 2024 to the end of this decade, they're going to start implementing this technology. So it's pretty interesting to see the different types of um, aircraft that will be coming out in the next decade. We, we know so much more than we did a couple of decades ago about efficient ways to do that and we've got more tools at our disposal and we, we would love to see um, the best practices be propagated throughout the globe. Alright, so this is the CEO, um, Peter Ingram. So he was directly asked about the prospect of electric aircraft with the Hawaiian Airlines fleet. Because of the Boeing 717 that they currently use, it's getting a little bit older and they need to start looking for newer aircraft to replace them. And because the 717s usually just do island hopping here in the islands, um, an electric aircraft would save them a lot of fuel if they're just going short distances. The, um, the problem he spoke about was just that right now it's all about the technology. Like right now they're only be able to carry maybe four to six passengers and so hawaiian airlines are going to wait for an aircraft that can come out that can carry a hundred or a hundred plus passengers um but they're definitely looking into it and um it'll be interesting to see what aircrafts come out for sure so back to um these types of fires um in the arf industry we're definitely going to have to adapt because right now our our vehicles are made to fight jet fuels and flammable liquids but if we're going to EV in the future then you know this PFOS and all these problems with these foams maybe we can start 
phasing them out, which would be a great thing as far as for exposure of firefighters. And then also maybe go towards more clean agents or a different type of agent altogether that's specific, um, a little bit more specific for these aircraft with these um, battery packs. So definitely be stay tuned. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on this as things start rolling out and new technologies keep coming in. Please like and subscribe. I hope you like this video and I'll catch you next time.